Hey, this is Michael Lindsay from Vital MX, and we just wrapped up our 2022 250 shootout. We're here to do our round table. We got four of our six test riders, myself and Sean Klinger, who are on staff at Vital MX, Chris Siebenhar and Willie Simons, who help us out with a lot of these tests. Um, they spent all the days of this shootout with us. We all have our individual notes, our opinions. We have our overall score, and we're going to basically break down each bike based on how they finished and see where we agree, where we disagree, because that's part of it. Ultimately, a shootout is a subjective opinion. There's not really a right or a wrong answer at the end of the day. It's just kind of what we think based on our experience and our thoughts, and that's what we're here to share with you. So there's going to be one of these videos on each motorcycle. Make sure you check out all of them if you're really interested in finding out which bike is best for you this year. So I will say I was a little shocked for our winner, not because it hasn't won before. I mean, it is the Yamaha YZ250F, and it's been on top for many years now. But uh, I think we all kind of agreed coming into this, all these bikes are really good. And we don't say that to fluff it. They really are. So I was struggling, you know, my first thoughts running through the bikes the first day, like, man, what, what bike is really standing out as the best one for me? Um, I think we all kind of sat there. But at the end of the day, it's a pretty dominant result with four Riders picking as their number one bike and two riders picking as second with eight points overall. I've said before, I will say it again. Best way to win a shootout is the same way as winning a championship. Don't finish off the podium. What do you think, Klinger? Number one, the most impressive trait of that bike for me is its versatility. The fact that you make suspension changes and you feel them a lot. Um, you don't have to make huge changes. Uh, you make the, the changes to the Power Tuner app and you can get so many different motorcycles in one motorcycle. And I think that's really cool. I mean, it's it changes from track to track. So, I mean, obviously the power is incredibly potent. It's almost like a mini 450 kind of feel, very quick revving, very aggressive. But if you want, like today, I asked for like the slowest revving map they have. And one that they have is, I think it's called Linear Smooth. And it really slows down that rev rate and it like is easier to ride if that's what you're looking for uh suspension wise it just works great i mean i did have to make a few changes to get it there so right out of the box um i felt like the fork was a little twitchy for me i wanted to slow that down and soften it up and the same with the rear but once i did that it went from like kind of a little vague feeling to like super planted so i mean engine suspension handling it all worked for me yeah, the uh, the Yamaha. I've said it in the past. It's it's definitely a, a bang for your your buck type of motorcycle. It's all around. The range is is so high on that bike. You have six different test riders that are different weights, different riding styles, different everything, and that bike just seems to work for everyone. Um, torque wise, it's definitely one of the highest in the class. You can over rev that bike. You can ride it, short shift it, and it's gonna make power no matter what. So. Same thing with me, just a couple changes here and there, little clicks. And uh, one thing on the Yamaha is you do have to get the ride height correct on that bike. They come a little rear end high, so once you get that settled in, then that thing just works great. It seems to work for everyone. Um, one thing I did notice with this shootout, uh, and I've rode Yamahas a long time, is compared to other manufacturers, that bike has a little more engine braking than some of them, but with all that power, uh, it's not a huge deal, and obviously all the adjustability that you have with the tuner app, um, you can really go wild on that thing, even past what it comes with. So, Did you try different, what, what were the maps that you tried? I tried all the standard ones, so the light on, light off. So map one is the uh, more mellow, yeah, stock, and uh, the second one is the more aggressive. And then I wanted to kind of go past that, especially at Kawea with the track being more wide open, less rough. And so I did... Another map that was a little less hard hitting, but trying to detune the engine braking, keep it more free flow. Uh, and I didn't notice a huge change with that. And then uh, the guys over at Yamaha set us up with, they call it the exciting map. And that's the one that I would pick if I had to choose the four. Over revving and kind of, if you need to short shift it, obviously Paris is more of a tighter track and the power's kind of all around the map. So that's what I noticed. And I mean, you just can't go wrong with the Yamaha and that's why it's been winning our shootouts. It's, it's just working for everyone. Kind of weird for me is the Yamaha wasn't my number one bike either day, actually. It was, I would put it in second place both days, but that's why we rode. You know, yes, we could test for weeks and weeks on end, but eventually we're going to end up probably in the same place. We picked two different tracks, Paris Raceway. Everybody knows it's a classic. It's a tight, man-made style track. It has a little bit of a hillside, but it's mostly just man-made jumps. Point and shoot, little tight ruts, couple wall berms. And then Cahia is just this super wide open. Uh, you're kind of always turning on the track. It's got huge 
just berms and stuff, but it's, it's, um, you never really like accelerating off the bottom that much key. You're always kind of carrying momentum. And that's where it was interesting is the Yamaha Akihi. I like it because the suspension package is so good. Um, the chassis ZZ Adala is very comfortable where that track has a lot of high speed chatter. The engine there for me was good, but it was almost too quick revving. Like I'm going through the gear so quick there where like the Austrian bikes are really spread out long power. So that's why I went back to the guys. I'm like, Hey, I, you know, when they update that motor 19, it went from being like this low mid beast to they, they tried to brawn it out. It lost a little bit of that low end character, but part of what still makes it feel so exciting is it revs so fast. And I came back, I'm like, Hey, that's cool. I need to rev slower. Like I need to draw this power out. I need to make it more usable over a range. So basically, you know, play like, Hey, can you neuter it for me a little bit? Help, help calm it down. So that was uh, the standard map. I tried the exciting, which was light on, which was cool. Like, it, like you said, a Paris, but a Kahia, it was actually like too much for me even more. So, um, I ran, they have a map called over rev that helps it carry through the top more and doesn't make it feel like it falls on its face. Doesn't have as much engine braking. I really like that one. He has spread out the power. Um, as you said, balance is important. The bike comes at seven millimeter stock on the fork. They want to set around 102, 103 sag. I went all the way to like 106, 107 because it was just a little nervous on the front. They're trying to, I think after years of saying, hey, the Yamaha is this big pig of a bike or whatever, and it doesn't steer. It's like out of the box. Hey, they don't want you to say it doesn't have weight on the front end. So chopping out a little bit helps me a lot. Keeps it not as nervous on the front end. Allows the fork to just work a little more naturally. But ultimately for me at the end of the day, it's the same as like the 450 shootout by the 451. I would say track to track to track. I don't know if I would ever actually say it's my absolute favorite, but it's so darn good at every track. I can't deny it the win when I look at one bike and go, oh, well, I really like this here today, but it wasn't that good at that place. When the Yamaha, I'm just like, I, I can't knock it no matter where well, we go. And, yeah, and you can make changes that are really noticeable, both suspension wise and um, an engine. One of the things I really liked about it was I felt the bike had a ton of mechanical grip, like around fast turns, going up faces of jumps into corners. There's so much grip off the front and rear that I had a ton of confidence on the bike, like instantly, uh, where some of the other bikes, like I'd, I'd feel out the bike for a lap or two, kind of see what it's going to do. little nuances. Like the Yamaha just had so much grip. Um, like I said, the motor is, is amazing. Chassis is stable. Um, I tried, Stock map, over rev map, I end up settling on the aggressive map, both at Cahia and at Paris. Um, but one thing that I really like about that bike compared to some of the other ones is how you can change the map on the fly. You know, so while you're, what I would do is, is I'd ride, you know, a, a lap or two and then over a jump, I would push the button, change the map, and then just continue on. So you don't have to pull off the track, stop, you know, and, and put the bike in neutral or whatever, uh, or go back to the truck. And I think there's a really big advantage to that is that if this was your race bike, um, you know, and you're on the line and all of a sudden the water truck goes out and, and soaks the track, if you have a friend there with the app or, or your phone, you can adjust your settings. You can have a wet map and you can have your power map, run it in the wet map, track goes good in a jump, flick it to power, and then you're back to good, you know? So um, that I think is something that's, that's very unique about that bike. Uh, same thing, I mean, the suspension was good. I think it went a little stiffer, Cahia, a little softer, at Paris and I was happy. Thank you for joining us for another round table. Like I said at the beginning, there is multiple of these, one for every single motorcycle, whichever one you've just watched. If you wanna learn about the next most interesting bike, make sure you hit our video playlist, look around, there's plenty of them in there. If you wanna check out our full detailed article, dyno charts, you know, weights, all the stuff you wanna read through, that's on our site at vitalmx.com. The link is in the bio below. And once again, if you like what we do here, please subscribe, hit like, it really helps us and we get to keep cranking out great content like this.